They're stressed out, they're not happy, they're growing small, but this is the complete opposite. If you want to know the best, I mean, Rob Nash, he's doing it the right way. So yeah, one of the right things he's doing, because he has, I mean, it's not just one thing or another thing that he's doing to make his style right. It's all the different things he's learned over the years, and he basically does this, does this, and there's so many different intricacies, you know, that if I spent a week here, I might start beginning to learn. But one of them, I'm confident, can help you guys out, whether you're growing, you know, aquaponically, or whether you have a soil-based garden, it's the compost tea. So let me show you guys his new and innovative compost Post T Vortex Brewer using a 15 gallon bucket he came up with. What we're looking at now is the compost tea bucket. You guys can see it's like bubbling up in there. And simply, this is a 15 gallon bucket. And actually, until today, I didn't even know they had 15 gallon buckets. I guess chlorine originally came in it, and he washed it very well before using it because chlorine and microbes, they don't mix. It's kind of like oil and water, right? Anyways, what he's done is he's got like an active aqua pump here, my favorite brand of pump to use myself in my own compost tea brewing. He's basically got a hole in the bottom of this uh, bucket here that basically has the uh, water going into the tube, the PVC tube, and this is basically a lift pump where he's pumping in the water. And if you guys look, I mean, there's a lot of water bubbles coming out in there to brew his tea. Now, he doesn't mess around with any kind of tea bags or anything. He just puts all the mixture, which is very rich in the worm castings, to brew in there, and then he'll spread this out into his garden amongst his growth as needed to enhance the plant growth. Now the main reason for the compost tea is not necessarily for the nutrients in the tea, but it's for the microbes. He is literally breeding microbes, whether he's breeding them in a compost tea or using a bottled product that contains plenty of microbes because it's the microbes are the driving force, whether you've got a soil system or whether you've got a system like he's doing here with the aquaponics. And so before I show you guys the aquaponics without the fish, I want to really stop here and show you guys some of the different soil supplements that he uses because it is so important for successful growth, whether you're growing in an aquaponic system, you know, a soil system like I do, or even a hydro system. Some of these nutrients can be used even in a hydro system. And you know, of course, you know, one of the basis of my gardening style and apparently of Rob's too is the worm castings. He's had some organic worm castings. I mean, the worm castings literally provide the fire, you know, to break down the nutrients and make them available for the plant. So he uses plenty of worm castings. He has a lot of different diverse mineral supplementation with different levels of both, you know, macro and micro and trace minerals, which is which is super critical for your gardening style. I mean, he really likes to focus on this when he teaches classes, and this is what I try to focus on too, because most people are not focusing on trace minerals, and you know, he, like me, likes to use varied sources, and not just like one rock dust powder, he uses all different kinds, because, you know, every different kind, and we mix them in in small amounts, you know, can provide something different to your plant, feed a certain different kind of microbe that might not like a different kind of mineral, right, and we need this biodiversity in minerals, and also the microbes to really feed our soil, so he's got things like the crab shells here. He's got this stuff called Humagrow Natural Soil Conditioner or Natural Humates. He's got, of course, we're in Texas. He's got the Texas green sand, not the stuff from New Jersey. He's got this other stuff called the Yum Yum Mix, which is really cool. It's got things like alfalfa meal, cottonseed meal, green sand, kelp meal, rock dust, rock phosphate, humate, dry molasses. I mean, this pretty much looks almost just like a compost tea. All you gotta do is add the worm castings. Never seen that before. He's got the Mineral Plus by Soil Mender. He's got uh, some uh, salt pomeg. He's got the oh, Actino Iron, really good product to use in your aquaponic system. He's got an organicide uh, garden spray. This is an organic certified garden spray for insects. I personally uh, like to neem stuff better. And most importantly for you guys that have uh, aquaponics systems or even hydro systems, this stuff above all the other products is what I'd recommend. You know, this provides the microbes in your hydroponic system.
system that may be lacking. It says aquaponic safe hydroorsol contains endo and uh, ecto fungi as well as plenty of different bacteria. This is a component that is missing from most gardening styles. You know, whether you get a liquid that you can use like this in your water-based system or whether you get some dry powder like I use and Rob also use or whether you're getting some of that from the earthworms, I think supplementing the microbes in addition to supplementing the trace minerals are super critical. So I guess uh, with that, let's go ahead and take a look at this fishless aquaponics system he's doing. So now we're looking at the fishless aquaponics system. I mean, this it, to me also is the future of farming. You know, we don't really need fish in an aquaponic system, right? Fish are like an intermediary step. They're really not required, but they're so like given like, you know, like they're God, like in the aquaponic system. You don't really even need them if you do it properly, like he's doing here. As you guys can see behind me, he's got plenty of a uh, nice, delicious uh, Swiss chard growing and some dinosaur kale that's, you know, topping at two to three feet. And yes, you know, I just showed you guys the clip of all the minerals and uh, microbes that he uses, and those are the driving, the true driving forces in a system like this. And how this happened for Rob, because I could show you guys in this little tank here, <laughs> there's no fish. What happened to the fish? Well, so what happened to him was what might happen to many of you guys, right? You know, he's got tilapia, they're cold sensitive, there's a cold snap, he lost his fish, but meanwhile he has all these vegetables growing in the bed. But now your source of fertilizer is poof, it's gone, your fish are floating, man. They're not making any more nutrients for you guys. What do you do? You can't, you know, get large sized tilapia like in bulk mass quickly to repopulate your fertilizer source. What do you do? So he actually had to sit down and say, crap, what do I do? And so he had to figure out like, well, why do we even need the fish in the first place? So what drives this system in here is completely worm poo or worm castings instead of fish poo. And as you guys can see, it's working amazing. And he's had to supplement some of the other natural organic ingredients that he uses in his whole garden style, but it's working amazing. And so what if we could do aquaponics without fish? Well, you don't need to no longer ask yourself what if we could do it because it can be done and Rob Nash knows how. So, I mean, this is a commercial production farm. You know, he charges three bucks a head for his lettuce. He charges top dollar for his top quality produce. And that's something also very important to me. You know, I don't, I don't mind paying for top quality stuff like they're growing here at Austin Aquaponics, but I do mind, you know, buying expensive stuff that's not top quality because most farmers are simply just not doing the practices it takes to do this. And as much as I like that I've shared with you guys how he's growing commercially, he also has, besides his commercial side of the business, he also has a whole side of his business where he educates and sets people up in the local area, gives classes for people that want to grow at home like you and me. And so what we're going to do next is actually go to his home where actually he has some demonstration uh, you know, setups for a system that you could build on a much smaller scale. And also he, has, uh, he gives classes here. So let's go ahead, go up top and share more information about that. So now we're up top, right next to Rob's home where he lives and actually what we're looking at now is a little classroom area because every two to three weeks he gives a class here that you come and attend and learn the wealth of the knowledge, you know, and how to apply the knowledge that he's learned commercially in a home environment. So he just has, you know, like 10, 15, 20, 30 people here giving a little class and he gave an intro class which he often gives and he's just kind of explaining to me, you know, the two set so you guys kind of see off to the side of the picture, you know, there's like a lot of different ways to do aquaponics, right? They got just two stock tanks, maybe about $120 worth of stock tanks, drill a couple holes and you got an instant, you know, system that you could start growing food in or if you want to, you know, spend a little more money, have a little bit more nicer looking, you could get a, you know, a similar system, line it with wood and, you know, a pond liner and have a system that looks a lot better, but it's going to cost you more, maybe involves some more labor. Now that's really cool, you know, I've learned a lot of cool things here today um, about the aquaponics and more importantly, 
the bioponics, which I'm super interested in. Oh, and what I want to show you guys next is actually his little personal grow area. Yeah, no, there's no, none of that kind of stuff growing here. But his little personal grow area where he actually uh, has some of the kits and demonstrates the kits that he makes available to people in the local area that he'll actually set up. But more importantly, also makes information available online so that you can build your own kit, you know, to glean 10 years of knowledge uh, from Rob since he's been doing it that long. So let's go ahead, go over to his personal grow and check out a little bit of what he's growing. So what we're looking at now is Rob's personal own little grow area here where he has some, uh, uses it for demonstration, but also grows some of his own food. And uh, one of the cool things that he talked to me about was that, you know, he sets up like one of these four by 10 or four by eight foot beds with basically one of each plant, you know, a tomato, a basil, a pepper, and some greens, all this kind of stuff. So that a person coming here that just really wants to just grow some food, know where their food comes from, can set up just one little system and of all the different plants they need, you know, to literally feast on and to eat out of their own garden. So in this area has a, like the demonstration 300 uh, gallon, 150 gallon uh, setups to demonstrate what he can install, also to show, you know, uh, how you can actually make it yourself. He also has other little systems just as demonstrations and you know besides just growing the vegetables which is most commonly talked about in the aquaponics you know you can also grow things like trees and um, grapevines. So you have some grapevines there that are two years old now that are doing quite well. He's going to be um, growing some blueberries in this same uh, fashion through a mixture of you know uh, bioponics, aquaponics, or even hydroponics, and he like intermixes what he does in each different set. I'm like, hey, what are you doing this? And he's like, well, you know, I'm gonna use the, the fish water from there, and then I'm gonna add some additional nutrients up top, and like, man, the dude's really into this stuff. So actually, I'm really excited about the next part of this episode for you guys, because I'm gonna get to sit down with Rob, you know, the creator, the master grower here, and we're gonna, you know, basically pick his brain a little bit for a little bit of time, a little bit of time I got left here, and uh, share that information with you guys. So actually, let's go ahead and head back down and uh, talk to Rob. So now we're with Rob Nash, the master grower here that made all this happen. I mean, he's been growing for over 10 years now with the aquaponics, and he knows more than probably anybody ever visited in his place. As 